Welcome to True Projects. In this video, we are going to explain about the project, which is an intelligent intrusion detection system for smart consumer electronics network. Introduction of the project. The Internet of Things has elevated traditional consumer electronics, which are CEs, to the next level by enhancing their connectivity and intelligence. This evolution enables CEs to communicate with each other and access data through internet, delivering greater convenience and automation to users in various domains such as smart homes and wearables. However, the integration of IoT into CEs has led to an increased vulnerability to cyber threats. These smart CE networks are susceptible to various cyber attacks including distributed denial of service which are DDoS attacks due to their dynamic nature and remote accessibility. The project focuses on addressing the cybersecurity challenges faced by smart CE networks. It recognizes the conventional security measures are insufficient to protect these networks given their specific service needs such as low latency, mobility, scalability and resource limitations. The project proposes the use of intrusion detection system as the backbone for the next generation smart CE network. It offers high security, scalability, dynamism, efficiency and reconfiguration capabilities. Objective of the project The project's primary objective is to create a robust cyber security framework to protect smart consumer electronics which are CE networks with a specific focus on countering distributed denial of service which are DDoS attacks and emerging threats, ensuring the security and reliability of these networks. To achieve this goal, the project aims to leverage the publicly available CIC IDS 2018 dataset, a valuable resource for enhancing cyber security measures by effectively identifying and mitigating cyber threats in smart CE networks. The project's core objective is to develop a scalable cyber security framework that utilizes advanced models like BILSTM, GRU and DNN to bluster the defense mechanisms against DDoS attacks and evolving cyber threats within smart consumer electronics network. To implement this project, we need hardware and software requirements. Coming to hardware requirements, we need operating system of Windows, processor of i5 and above, RAM of 8 GB and above, and hard disk of 25 GB and above. Coming to software requirements, we need Anaconda 3 and Visual Studio. To implement the project, we have designed various modules in the flow of work. The first one is importing the packages. In this module, the necessary libraries and packages are imported which are NumPy for numerical operations, Pandas for data manipulation, TensorFlow for deep learning, Matplotlib and Seaboard for visualizations and Scikit-learn for machine learning. Exploring the dataset. This module involves the exploration of the CIC IDS 2018 dataset allowing us to understand its structure, features and contents. Visualization using Seaborn and Matplotlib Here, data visualization is performed using Seaborn and Matplotlib libraries to gain insights into the dataset's characteristics and relationships between variables. Data Processing This module involves data cleaning and pre-processing tasks including removing duplicate data, this step involves identifying and removing duplicate entries within the dataset to ensure data integrity and accuracy. Drop cleaning. It typically involves handling missing values, outliers or irrelevant columns to prepare the dataset for analysis. Feature selection. Feature selection techniques are applied to choose the most significant features for analysis, reducing dimensionality and improving model performance. Selecting the X and Y data, this process involves segregating the dataset into input features X and target variable Y, which is the variable to be predicted. Reducing feature for analysis using mutual correlation with select percentile. Feature selection methods such as mutual correlation with select percentile are applied to reduce the number of features while retaining the most relevant ones. This helps in improving model efficiency and performance. Appending selected features to X and target column to Y. The selected features are added to the input variable X and target variable Y is defined, which represents the prediction target. Splitting the dataset into train and test. The dataset is split into two parts. A training set is used to train machine learning models which are deep learning models and a test set used to evaluate model performance. Building the model. This module involves building deep learning models including BILSTM, GRU and DNN. 
coming to buy LSTM. By directional long short term memory, it is a deep learning model that is particularly effective for sequence data and time series analysis. It is used in this project for its ability to capture temporal dependencies and patterns within the data, making it suitable for tasks such as intrusion detection. GRU, which is Gated Recurrent Unit, it is another type of deep learning model that is similar to LSTM but computationally more efficient. It is chosen for its ability to handle sequential data and it is used in parallel with other models for comparison. DNN, which is Deep Neural Network. Deep Neural Networks are traditional neural network architecture with multiple layers. They are employed in this project for their flexibility in handling various types of data and tasks. Training the model. The deep learning models are trained on the training data to learn patterns and relationships within the data set. As an extension, we have used deep learning models and ensemble models for improving accuracy and we built front-end using Flask framework for user testing and with user authentication. Flask framework with SQLite for sign up and sign in. Flask, a web application framework, is utilized to create a user interface for user registration and login. SQLite is used as the database to store user information. User gives input. User can input data or information related to the prediction task. Data pre-processing and prediction. The user's input is pre-processed to ensure it matches that format expected by the training model. The trained model is then used to make predictions based on the input data. Final outcome is displayed. The results of the prediction are displayed to the user providing insights or actionable information based on input data and the trained model's output. Accuracy Comparison Graph This is the Accuracy Comparison Graph where y-axis represents algorithm names and x-axis represents accuracy scores of that particular algorithm. Precision Comparison Graph This is the Precision Comparison Graph. Here y-axis represents algorithm names and x-axis represents precision score of that particular algorithm. Recall Comparison Graph This is the Recall Comparison Graph where x-axis is recall score for algorithms and y-axis is the algorithm names. F1 score comparison graph. This is the F1 score comparison graph. Here X axis represents F1 score of the algorithms and Y axis represents algorithm names. For execution of the project, first we need to open the code folder which contains source code files. This is the code folder of the project. This is the static folder. This folder contains files related to CSS, JavaScript and Bootstrap files. This is the templates folder. This folder contains all HTML pages used in the project. It typically includes files like index.html, home.html, etc., which represent different pages of the website. These are the model files. These contain algorithm information and that will be loaded into project code during runtime. This is the app.py file. It contains information related to front end logic. It includes code written in Python that handles server side operations such as processing user requests, interacting with the database and generating dynamic content that to be rendered in the HTML templates. This is the notebook.ipynb file. This is a Jupyter notebook file which contains a combination of code, graphs and outputs all in one place. It allows users to write and execute code in individual cells making it popular choice for the data sites. This is the signup.db file. This file is the database file used to store the user information. Now we need to copy the address of the code folder from the address bar. Open the anaconda prompt. Using the cd command followed by the space we need to paste the copied path and click on enter. This will change the current directory to the code folder's path. So here current directory is changed to the code folder's path. Here we need to type python space app.py and click on enter. This command will execute the python script and perform a runtime check for any syntax errors or logical issues. After running the app.py file, the Flask framework will host the application locally at the default address which is the localhost, this is the localhost and the port. And now we need to copy this local link provided by the Flask framework and paste it in any browser. So we'll copy this link and open the Google Chrome. And here we will paste the link. And now we need to click on enter. 
this is the web page of the project which is displayed in the browser and this web page is built by using the flask framework so first we need to click on sign up and here we need to enter all the registration details if we are registering newly i have already registered so i'll directly click on sign in and here we need to enter our credentials which are the username and the password and now we need to click on login we have logged in successfully and here we can see that we need to enter all these parameters so let us understand the parameters this is forward packet length standard deviation it measures the variation in the length of forward packets in a network flow it is forward packet length mean it represents the average length of forward packets in a network flow this is forward packet length maximum this parameter indicates the maximum length observed among forward packets in a network flow this is forward segment size average it signifies the average segment size for forward traffic in a network flow this is packet length standard deviation it measures the variation in the length of all packets in a network flow this is flow inter arrival time standard deviation it quantifies the variation in time intervals between consecutive flows it is backward packet length standard deviation similar to forward packet length standard deviation but it is for backward packets in a network flow it is backward segment size average it represents the average segment size for backward traffic in a network flow this is packet size average it indicates average size of all packets in a network flow it is subflow forward bytes this parameter measures the number of bytes in the forward subflow of a network now let us enter all the parameters and then we will get the prediction whether attack is detected or not i entered all the parameters now let us click on predict it is predicted that there is no attack detected and it is normal now let us enter all the other parameters i entered other parameters and now let us click on predict it is predicted that attack is detected and it is dos attack in this way by giving the parameters attacks will be detected and that will be predicted conclusion of the project the project effectively bolsters intrusion detection capabilities within smart consumer electronics network with a specific focus on countering distributed denial of service which is ddos attacks and proactively addressing emerging cyber threats the selection of algorithm with the highest accuracy among the four under consideration served as the basis for deploying the intrusion detection system in this project ensuring the robustness of the security measures this project substantiates the efficacy of the ids by utilizing cic ids 2018 dataset demonstrating its superior performance through meticulous comparisons with contemporary intrusion detection techniques to meet the evolving challenges in safeguarding smart consumer electronic networks the project advocates the adoption of deep learning based intelligent models for efficient and adaptive threat detection thereby fortifying the security landscape thank you for watching video for more projects please visit our website www.trueprojects.in for updates on latest project videos Please visit True Projects YouTube channel and subscribe.